If you're not a master at your craft, it's only because you don't own yourself yet. If you asked me what was the one video I would show my little sister if I had one, then this would be the video I would show her. Especially if she was frustrated asking herself why getting better is so difficult nowadays. I would want my little sister to watch this video because it would solve that problem for her. Mastering your craft is no easy thing, but here's a secret. It becomes the easiest and most natural thing in the world only after you master yourself first. Let's look at some historical proof. Improving is not just caused by luck or hard work. There are actually a number of factors you need to put into the equation. Let me prove it. Van Gogh. Why did he become a master? One, he had a very organized schedule. He was consistent with it almost every day. He would often wake up, start painting as soon as there was enough light, and continue working until the light faded. He produced an astonishing amount of work in a relatively short time. Over 2,100 artworks, including 860 oil paintings in just over a decade. Therefore, instead of sauntering outside and looking for entertainment options or friends to hang out with, he sacrificed his entertainment for progress. Hey, by the way, don't forget to subscribe. You will love watching my upcoming content. 2. Constant Evolution Van Gogh's style evolved over time as he experimented with color technique and subject matter. His ability to learn, adapt, and innovate was key to his development as an artist. 3. Intense focus and no distraction because he wasn't surrounded by distractions, Van Gogh's focus was almost obsessive. He would become entirely absorbed in his work, blocking out everything else. His emotional and mental states often were to paint in birth bursts of energy where he would work for long hours without breaks. Van Gogh became a great artist not just because of his natural talent, but because of his relentless dedication, his willingness to learn and to evolve, and his ability to channel his emotional depth into his art. His daily life was marked by intense focus, long hours of work, and a lifestyle that prioritized his art above all else. Imagine if he spent his days out with his friends instead, we would have never heard his name. Another example, Virginia Woolf, famous author. Let me just read you her da daily schedule so you'll understand what I'm talking about. Morning, she would have breakfast. Then, writing. She engages her primary writing work usually from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. This is her most productive and focused period. Afternoon, takes a break for lunch. Then, she often takes a walk while her, the food digests and she finds it rejuvenating and mentally stimulating. Then she returns home and spends her time reading or writing letters. In the evening, she does some light work, sometimes light revisions or reading of her work in the evening. Then she ends her workday with dinner. At night, she participates in social activities or gatherings, but that's after she's done with all of her work. She might relax at night, unwind by reading or discussing with her husband, Leonard Wolf. Then she retires to bed, ensuring she gets enough rest for the next day. The most organized and productive schedule ever. It's filled with writing and reading, writing and reading which are both crucial for an author's improvement. It includes practice as well as learning from other authors by reading. In every craft, it's a must to have a balance between practice and learning. Virginia's schedule is also, Virginia Woolf's schedule is also catered towards improving. It's impossible not to improve because she also has an active lifestyle, which is really important for having a healthy mind. Healthy mind equals able to be creative. In Virginia's mind, only after she's done with her day's work is it okay to go out and socialize and have some fun with family and friends? 
I can promise you that every single master you will look at, Beethoven, Michelangelo, or any master in any field, I can promise you they master themselves first and their daily schedules and lifestyle before they master their craft. I can promise you that 1000 million percent. We would all be really successful if we adopted consistent schedules and stuck to them. Instead, let me tell you why most of us suck and complain about failing. Let's just compare that to the schedule of Virginia Woolf, for example. I'll give you a kind of exaggerated schedule just to be funny. I know not everyone's like that, but here's an example scenario. Jody binge watches Netflix and eats chips at night, so she ends up sleeping late. She drank a caffeinated fizzy drink, so now she can't sleep too well and even checks her phone in the middle of the, in the, middle of the night, interrupting her sleep. She wakes up groggy and pounds two mugs of coffee to make up for her lack of energy. And caffeine, by the way, makes her stressed and confused. She goes and wears some makeup, takes selfies, checks her social media, and reads negative news to mess up her positivity and shatter her attention span. Then she takes a taxi and travels to her job, her dream job. She's always wanted to be an architect. She attempts to work with the distracting pinging of her phone, with which she keeps submitting to and checking, destroying her flow state each time. She lies to herself that she worked well today, but she actually barely got anything done because Jody is too stressed and too ADHD because of the caffeine and the lack of sleep, and she's also distracted by her social media. For lunch break, she stress eats a bunch of sugar and carbs, which melt her brain and make her too tired to think. She continues working, apparently. She leaves work and lays on her couch at home. She scrolls Instagram, comparing herself to other women, and scrolls her social media feed for hours, watching silly videos and then watching dumb shows, telling herself and convincing herself it's only because she needs to de-stress. She wonders if she should do workouts, but her excuse is that she's been working too hard anyway, so she just lays on the couch. In the end of the day, she goes out with her friend, toxic friend Marcy, and they drink alcohol, eat fries, and junk food, Jody goes to sleep late, the cycle repeats. That is a lot of people right now in our modern day, by the way, just like Jody. Jody has not mastered her mood swings, she has not mastered her mind, she keeps making up excuses, and she keeps committing bad lifestyle decisions. She doesn't focus on her dream of becoming the best architect in Melbourne. She knows she has that dream, but she just doesn't do anything to get there. Therefore, she remains mediocre, never becoming the best, never even becoming truly professional. If I had a little sister who wanted to become the best singer, for instance, I would tell her that is the difference between most people and the masters. Masters first master themselves before they master their crafts. After blocking out distractions and fostering productive schedules where they prioritize long-term gratification over quick fixes, masters are able to master their crafts. It becomes natural to improve. When you adopt a better schedule and stay focused, improving and sacrificing fun becomes the new norm. You will want to do that. You will keep doing that. You will start enjoying working on the thing you love and it becomes satisfying leaving entertainment for only after you've accomplished what you have set out to accomplish. You start wanting to procrastinate entertainment you do not procrastinate work anymore, it's just entertainment you procrastinate. If you think this makes sense, please leave a like. You might tell me, well, Van Gogh and Virginia Woolf's time, at Virginia and, and Van Gogh's time, there were no distractions and things like that. Today there's technology, TV, screens everywhere, phones everywhere. We're just forced into a life of chaotic, buzzing distraction. True, unfortunately you're right. Today's life is so fast-paced, 
so distracting and the infrastructure of cities just makes it so hard to even be physically active and it doesn't help that gym subscriptions are so expensive. And let's not forget the air quality is basically trash. We're surrounded by trash food and toxic people every day everywhere. It's much harder to master ourselves today than it was 80 years ago. Than it was if we were born 80 years ago, I mean. If you know you need to be productive and focused, but you struggle with doing that, well, the answer is this. Your whole solution is hidden in this video on my channel called How to Stay Productive 98% of Every Day. It will literally explain to you it will literally teach you how you can make it so that it is easy for you to be productive. If you watch that video, you will know how to be productive without even trying. I will link that video in the end and I will also link it in the description down below. You can also buy me a coffee to support me if you want. Not being pushy, just if you want. Anyways, watch the continuation of this video. It will help you so much. Trust me on that. Thank you so much for watching until the end. See you in the next video. Bye.